Assalamu alaikum dear students I am Muhammad Rauf lecturer department of zoology cast welcome to the course principles in animal life 2 this is lecture number 31 the topic is gene regulation in eukaryotes discussing agenda for the topic will be initiation of translation and mRNA degradation protein processing and degradation non-coding RNAs play multiple roles in controlling gene expression effects on mRNAs by micro RNAs and small interfering RNAs lecture outcome after watching and listening this lecture, students will know about various, various steps where the product of a gene is regulated. Remember, this is the second part of the lecture. Initiation of translation and mRNA degradation. So now the messenger RNA after modification in the nucleus finds its way via the nuclear pores and reaches cytoplasm so this is another level where the gene the product of a gene can be regulated either this messenger RNA will be able to get itself translated or it will be degraded or its trans translation will be prevented so there is another level of regulation now let's see what happens translation is another opportunity for regulating gene expression it occurs most commonly at the initiation stage initiation stage we discussed in translation it is a process where messenger rna the two subunits of ribosome and transfer rna come close to each other and are arranged properly so this is the initiation of translation now for some RNAs, mRNAs, the initiation of translation can be blocked by regulatory proteins that bind to specific sequences or structures within the UTR at the 5 dish or 3 dish end preventing the attachment of ribosomes. Uh, we have already discussed uh, the extra sequences which are attached to the 5 dish and 3 dish ends of the mRNA these sequences are not translated but their function is the correct settlement of messenger RNA on the surface of ribosomes uh, and they helps in the initiation of translation so if those sequences are bound by certain regulatory elements then this messenger RNA will not be able to attach to the ribosomes and hence the process of transcription translation will not occur alternatively translation of all the mRNAs in a cell may be regulated simultaneously means at a time in eukaryotic cells such global control usually involves the activation or inactivation of one or more of the protein factors required to initiate translation so if the protein factor is activated then all the RNAs are translated at once and if it's inactivated then none of the RNAs undergo the process of translation this mechanism plays a role in starting translation of mRNAs that are stored in eggs the eggs receives the 
major part of cytoplasm and uh, this cytoplasm has some RNAs uh, which are given by the mother. These RNAs are copied from uh, genes in mother's body and then they are given in cytoplasm to the egg cells uh, and after fertilization only the translation of those RNAs takes place uh, and uh, these RNAs may be responsible for production of some very important genes which are required for the uh, early stages of development so the zygote doesn't need to synthesize that type of genes uh, that type of RNAs from its DNA but they are received as a gift from the mother side and only translation occurs in the zygote. So just after fertilization translation is triggered by the sudden activation of translation initiation factors. The lifespan of mRNA molecule in the cytoplasm is important in determining the pattern of protein synthesis in a cell. Bacterial mRNA molecules typically are degraded by enzymes within a few minutes of their synthesis. Bacteria is a prokaryotic organism where the process of transcription and translation takes place at the same time and because there is no nucleus so the process of transcription is not spatially and temporally different but it's different in eukaryotes uh, because they have a well-defined nucleus and secondly the transcription and translation in bacteria occur simultaneously at the same time because the lifespan of their messenger RNA is very very short uh, and the cell cannot afford to wait for the end of transcription and starts translation therefore both the processes occur simultaneously In contrast, mRNAs in multicellular eukaryotes typically survive for hours or days or weeks. For instance, the messenger RNA of the hemoglobin polypeptide alpha and beta globin in developing RBCs are usually stable and these long-lived mRNAs are translated repeatedly in RBCs. RBCs uh, are the red blood cells uh, and because the process of degradation of RBCs is going on so at the same time the process of their formation is also going on and therefore because it's a continuous process so the messenger RNA which carry message for the synthesis of the globin chains have long life now what happens once the protein is synthesized which type of post translational modification takes place and when that protein will be degraded and how so the final opportunity for controlling gene expression occurs after translation Often eukaryotic polypeptides must be processed to yield functional protein molecules. For instance, the cleavage of the initial insulin polypeptide proinsulin forms the active hormone, means once the messenger RNA carrying the message for the production of insulin is translated, then slight modification occurs in that particular polypeptide which enables it to perform its function. In addition, many proteins undergo chemical modifications that make them 
functional regulation might occur at any of the stages involved in modifying or transporting a protein. Finally, the length of time each protein functions in the cell is strictly regulated by selective degradation. If a protein performs its function, then this protein must be or should be degraded so that the individual amino acids are yielded and can be incorporated in the synthesis of another type of proteins. So many proteins such as cyclins involved in regulating the cell cycle must be relatively short-lived if the cell is to function appropriately we have already discussed cyclines and cdks uh, and uh, they are active only at one or two specific stages in the cell cycle then they are degraded so this that cell cycle proceeds through subsequent stages uh, so their production and degradation quickly is important for the normal division of the cell Now, remember this word ubiquitin. There are different types of proteins uh, that are located inside a cell. So, how the degradation machinery, the proteasomes which degrade proteins, how they will know which protein needs to be degraded and which protein needs to be avoided from degradation because some of the function of that protein is still pending so it is actually ensured by a small protein called ubiquitin ubiquitin is a small protein which is attached with the protein that is destined to be degraded so any protein attached with a ubiquitin tag is a signal for proteasomes that this particular protein has performed its function and it should be degraded. So ubiquitin tagged proteins are destroyed by proteasomes. Now we will discuss non-coding RNAs. Uh, non-coding RNAs are those RNAs uh, which are transcribed from DNA, then they are modified and they perform their functions. They are not translated. Only messenger RNA, which is a coding RNA, is translated into proteins. Uh, so non-coding RNAs are of several types uh, SNRNA, small nuclear RNA which helps in splicing uh, SNORNA, SIRNA, MIRNA, tRNA, ribosomal RNA these are the different types of non-coding RNAs. Genome sequencing has revealed that protein coding genes accounts for only 1.5% of the human genome. A very small fraction of the known protein coding DNA consists of genes for RNAs such as ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA. Until recently, scientists assumed that most of the remaining DNA was not transcribed. Uh, means the scientists were of the opinion that the only the protein encoding genes are the functional sequences in the DNA and the other sequences are junk. They doesn't have any function. That was the belief of the uh, researchers up till recently. However, a flood of recent data has contradicted this idea. Science is a dynamic 
field uh, where new discoveries are uh, and new findings sometimes results in the correction of the older beliefs. For example, a massive study of the entire human genome showed that roughly 75% of the genome is transcribed at some point in any given cell. And here we discuss two types of non-coding RNAs. Uh, The first is microRNAs. They are small, single-stranded, and capable of binding to complementary sequences in mRNA molecules. Uh, microRNAs are called so because they are only 22 nucleotides. Uh, and uh, some of the sequences in microRNAs are complementary to sequences in messenger RNA. So with the help of this complementarity, the microRNAs can bind with the messenger RNAs and therefore they can prevent the translation of those messenger RNAs or even degrade those messenger RNAs. So there are approximately 1,500 genes for microRNAs in the human genome and biologists estimate that expression of at least one half of all human genes may be regulated by microRNAs. A remarkable figure given the existence of microRNAs was unknown 25 years ago. Means the science is a dynamic field, uh, the research is going on across the world uh, and because of the development of technology, researchers became able to study the cells in deeper details uh, and microRNAs, although they were discovered in 1993 by Ambrose at that time, nobody knew what these RNAs are in what their function is and now after 25 years the researchers are in a position to document that there are 1500 genes which codes for microRNAs and uh, one half of all human genes are regulated by microRNAs. Uh, so in a short span of time uh, the our knowledge about microRNAs has increased uh, significantly and this is courtesy of research. Another class of small RNAs which is similar in size and function to microRNAs is called siRNAs or small interfering RNAs. Uh, both MI and siRNAs can associate with same proteins producing similar results. Now here, this is a microRNA protein complex. It's a microRNA and it is associated with proteins. You can study it in uh, detail if you like the proteins complex that it forms uh, with mRNA, microRNA are drosha and pasha. So the miRNAs binds to target MI, mRNA uh, with at least seven complementary bases. Now microRNA themselves are only 22 nucleotides uh, and messenger RNA can be thousands of nucleotides longer but there are seven to eight nucleotides in microRNAs which are complementary with messenger RNA and courtesy of this complementarity the microRNA along with the protein complex binds with the messenger RNA and it either degrades messenger RNA 
or it prevents this messenger RNA from binding with ribosomes and thus blocks translation. So it can perform both functions, degradation and blocking of translation. Now recently researchers have discovered yet another class of uh, non-coding RNAs which is called PV interacting RNAs or PI RNAs. Uh, these RNAs induce the formation of heterochromatin and they block the expression of some parasitic DNA elements in genome known as transposons. Transposons are jumping genes or they are mobile DNA elements. Uh, they are detached from one, say, one location in the genome and then they jump to another location and then they are reattached there. So these transposons quite often result in mutations if they fall into a coding area they can induce mutations uh, so the pv rnas they stop the movement of transposons uh, and in this way they ensures the integrity of the genome usually 24 to 20 31 nucleotides in length uh, they are processed from a longer single-stranded RNA precursors. Uh, means there are longer single-stranded RNAs uh, from which PI RNAs are processed uh, and after processing their length becomes 24 to 31 NTs. Uh, Researchers have also found a relatively large class of long non-coding RNAs ranging from 200 to two, two hundreds of thousands of nucleotides in length that are expressed at significant levels in specific cell types of at particular times. And uh, the long non-coding RNAs also perform their function in X chromosome inactivation where the long non-coding RNAs produces transcripts of the ZIST gene so these are in fact the product of the ZIST gene, the transcriptional product of the ZIST gene and ZIST gene is located on the chromosome which is destined to be inactivated. This is just a recall of the different stages where the product of a gene can be regulated and its uh, summary, a short summary which you can which can help you refresh your ideas about this topic. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.